This is the event you've been waiting for. Fans have come from all around the world to Anaheim, California for BlizzCon 2010, an annual celebration of all things Blizzard. Whether you're a fan of StarCraft, Diablo, or World of Warcraft, there's new info for you, and we're bringing it to you live in high definition and commercial free on DirecTV for day two of BlizzCon 2010. With all the latest on World of Warcraft Cataclysm, the brand new Demon Hunter class in Diablo 3, and brand new mods for StarCraft 2. Lots of excitement here at BlizzCon 2010, but it all began yesterday with the fans arriving for the first day of BlizzCon. And of course, the opening ceremonies with a big announcement. A brand new announcement from Mike uh, Morheim, and also Chris Metzen talking about what it is to be geek. And the revelation of the Demon Hunter class. The final class for Diablo 3 was revealed yesterday, live here on H DirecTV HD. And then we went to the costume contest, the dance contest, hosted by funny man Jay Moore and Cat Hunter, and some very interesting dancers. <laughs> Cat, and that was yesterday, and of course, now we get to day two with Tenacious D performing live here in HD on DirecTV later today. We're really excited about that. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Keeley back here for day two with the beautiful Cat Hunter. Cat, uh, today is a big day because now we get into some of the nuts and bolts of these games, especially World of Warcraft Cataclysm today, right? Absolutely. I have to tell you, day two is my favorite day. Yesterday, we had the heavy hitters. We had the big executives. But today, we get Corey Stockton, who's the lead world designer. We get Greg Street. We get Tom Chilton. We get Jay Allen Brock. We're going to be able to take all of your questions from the forum directly and then send them out to the to, you know, to the developers here from the fans. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to get wonderful. some real answers. Well, let's That's take a look right. at what's happening today on day two of BlizzCon 2010. It begins just a few minutes with the cinematics panel on World of Warcraft Cataclysm. They just did an amazing new cinematic. It was on the football game last weekend. Then we get into two World of Warcraft panels on the class, the open Q&A. The Diablo 3 open Q&A will be at 3 p.m. Pacific. The StarCraft 2 tournament finals are at 4.30. And then we lead into the closing ceremony because the D, the medal, is here at 6.30. <laughs> PM Pacific, Jack Black, and Kyle Gass. Uh, Blizzard always delivers for their fans, and the great thing is this show we're going to show to you guys right here on DirecTV in HD as well. So it's going to be a pretty good show, Kat. Pretty good day. It's going to be a great day, and I want to tell you all, I know you've been sending us our questions on Twitter, so please continue to do that at Jeff Ke Keeley and Kat, Kat Hunter. But I've also made a thread in the World of Warcraft forum, so be sure to post there. All right, well, we're getting off to the World of Warcraft Cataclysm panel all about the cinematics. You enjoy that. BlitzCon. Come on. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hope you guys are all having a good time. Hope you had a really good first day. Uh, we've got an awesome second day lined up for you. Uh, there's some great panels going on today. You should check those out for sure. Um, some tournament finals. Even if you're not into that game, you should go check it out. It's just fun to watch and the crowd just really gets into it. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, we have a closing ceremony with uh, some band playing. Do you guys remember what the band was? Uh, Some band playing. Uh, Tenacity a D or a B or something. Yeah. So I heard they're cool. You should check that out too. Uh, so yeah, we have Tenacious D at the end of the day. So that should be cool as well. Um, hopefully you guys are here to see how we make cinematics because that's what we're going to talk about. Um, specifically the cinematics for Cataclysm. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to introduce the panel that we have today. Uh, to my left, I have Mark Messenger, who is actually the director of Cataclysm. <laughs> this is uh, Mark's direct Blizzard director debut. Uh, he was originally a storyboard artist for us, and uh, we needed um, a new director. Uh, I used to direct a lot of the WoW pieces, and I moved over to StarCraft II, so we pulled Mark in and then kicked ass out there. So. Um, next, we have Seth Thompson. Uh, he's our environment uh, modeling supervisor. Morning. 
Fun fact about Seth is I've known him for many, many years. He and I went to college together, and the first time we met, he offered to dance the robot for me. He's, he's a little bit intoxicated, but, uh, but it was awesome. A little so. bit later. We'll do that. <laughs> All right, next uh, Question we have... Question and answer time. We'll do that. Maybe at, at the Q&A, you might be able to convince him. Uh, at the Q&A... Oh, sorry. Next we have uh, Mike Kelleher. He's our uh, visual effects supervisor. So, as you guys have seen, the visual effects team just really kicked ass on this project. Uh, they earned a lot of achievements and uh, leveled up and all that stuff. So, figured it made sense to bring him on here. And then finally, we have Taryn Gregory, uh, who seems to have a fan base right around here. Taryn uh, came in from, uh, we had two departments at Blizzard. One was the Machinima department and one was cinematics. And uh, cinematics started making in-game cinematics and Machinima started making in-game cinematics. So we decided to merge the two. And Taryn's one of the directors from that team. And now we're all underneath the, the cinematics umbrella, I guess you could say. Um, so Taryn's here to talk about some of the in-game stuff that you guys have seen over the year and uh, more specifically the, the ones that are in Cataclysm. And on top of that, since you guys are all here, you get a special treat. We're gonna have world premiere of one of the new in-game cinematics at this panel. And then myself, I'm Jeff Chamberlain. I've directed a few of the pieces that you're familiar with, uh, but I'm really just going to hand it off to these game. guys. So you want to take it away, Mark? Sure. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thanks to all of you for coming out this morning. This is exciting. <laughs> Well, uh, as you probably can imagine, uh, Blizzard is a fairly stimulating place to work. Uh, so what we're going to try to do today is uh, pull back the curtain a little bit and hopefully convey some of the challenges uh, and the fun of making a cinematic. So um, let's roll the clock back, if you would, to early 2009. We've got uh, Chris and Rob and the game team all hanging with us in cinematics. And we're kicking around ideas for the Cataclysm intro. Uh, Chris rolled out the core concepts behind the expansion, and he got us pretty excited. As you can imagine, he's very good at that. Um, the basic premise, we have, if I can get my clicker going, there we go. We have this very intense black dragon holed up in a very dark place, and he's stewing in a blind rage until that anger reaches Flashpoint, and he's got to bring the pain to the world of Azeroth. And the destruction that he unleashes reshapes the world, right? Now, um, one of the first questions that we always have to deal with when we start a WoW intro is, are we going to do a montage or not? Um, that approach has served us very well in the past, and it's a pretty natural way of showcasing an MMO. But, uh, but the Wrath of the Lich King cinematic had been a narrative story, and we'd all really love doing that as well. So I was uh, pretty pleased to see that the consensus seemed to be that we could do both. We could have the effect of a montage or a travelogue of showcasing different lands, but we could try to couch that in a narrative story of Deathwing gearing up to wreak havoc. So, um, so we all left that first meeting feeling pretty in sync about what we we're gonna try to accomplish. Um, in cinematics, we started uh, doing some, you know, designs and early sketches. But pretty quickly, uh, we realized there were some big questions to answer. And uh, one of the big question, biggest ones was, uh, which lands are we going to break, right? Uh, we were kind of like, yeah, all of them. We were kind of like kids in a candy store. We were like, um, well, uh, can we do Darkshore? What do you got? You know, can we do... Uh, Orgrimmar, what's going on? Dare we say Stormwind? Um, we had um, just, we did boards I can show you for all kinds of destruction. Um, we had, let's see, lava boiling out of Ironforge there, or uh, Firestorm through Thunder Bluff, or uh, there's the Stone Talon Mountains exploding. Um, <laughs> I think we briefly considered setting the World Tree on fire, but we didn't go for that. Um, Anyway, uh, the game team was super helpful in uh, sorting this all out with us. We did have some criteria for making those decisions. Uh, number one, level of recognition. We really did want to depict places that hopefully you guys would recognize. Uh, number two, 
balance because we felt an obligation to share the pain between the Alliance and the Horde. And, uh, and three, what we call the cool factor, which is really just the strength of the image itself. You know, the um, tidal wave looming over Booty Bay. That was an image where everybody just said, yeah, that sounds really cool, you know. Um, blowing up a Zeppelin over Orgrimmar. Sounds great, let's do it. Uh, Deathwing on the gates of Stormwind. You know, absolutely. As soon as that idea came up, there was no doubt that we were going to do that. Um, that was the second of our really big questions, and that's a thornier one, right? Which races do we want to feature? Um, in the beginning of our process, we usually have this blue sky period where all ideas are welcome, and we talked a lot about, you know, Night Elves and Darkshore, Orcs and Orgrimmar, the disaster movie concept of uh, people fleeing from the destruction, right? Um, we even had a, uh, the idea of staging an alliance horde battle out in front of the gray main wall right before the wall falls down. But, uh, but what we kept coming back to was that this is really Deathwing's story. This is Deathwing versus the world, essentially. And ultimately, that's the path that we chose to follow. Um, we did, however, there's Deathwing, got ready to destroy the world. But we did, however, really want to uh, show the new playable races, the goblins and the worgen. Um, the image of the goblins evacuating their erupting island just sounded, you know, so mournful and visually rich with the boats all steaming away. And, uh, and I'm personally a big werewolf movie fan, so for me, the idea of worgen streaming out of the gray main wall was very appealing. And, and you can see these storyboards here show how we plan to make those introductions. So, why didn't we, right? Well, um, we usually uh, cast a pretty wide net story-wise at first, and then we go back in and we prune and we refine. And um, what we kept asking ourselves was, what is essential, what is key? You know, Deathwing devastates Azeroth, got to have that, right? So, as a test, I went back to the animatic and just clipped out that Goblin Morgan section and pulled the two halves of the edit together. And honestly, you guys, it just worked right out of the gate. It felt cleaner, it felt more focused. Um, one thing is that we always knew we had in our pocket the option to do these introductions in gameplay. And when we get to Terran's part of the discussion, I think you're going to see that what his team was able to do with those intros was way more expansive than what we had planned. So it all worked out really well in my view. And frankly, this movie was called Cataclysm. So we felt the need to really bring the Cataclysm. We had a lot on our plate as it was. Um, uh, anyway, while all that was going on, uh, our team of intrepid concept artists was trying to answer the next big question, which is, uh, what does Deathwing look like? Now, Deathwing had been pretty well established in lore, of course, the novels, um, but he'd never actually been depicted visually in that much detail. I mean, everybody knows the little thumbnail and some of the cool Chris Metzen drawings, but to have a really comprehensively epic design for Deathwing, that was one of our top priorities. Again, we um, look, you know, we had this uh, brief blue sky period where we encouraged the concept artists to go crazy and just draw all kinds of cool dragons. Um, we wanted Deathwing to be, you know, nasty and aggressive and, and unique looking, but, um, but we also looked very hard at Sindragosa and the other WoW dragons because we wanted Deathwing to have their DNA, to feel like part of that family. Um, let me see what we el what else we got going here. Ah, yes, Deep Home. Cinematics was also encouraged to take point on developing the look of Deathwing's lair in Deep Home, since that portion of the game uh, was still in the early stages of development. It usually takes us about a year to do a WoW intro, so we need to get out in front of the game as you know as soon as possible. Um, in this case, the idea that developed was that uh, millennia ago the Titans had created this majestic chamber defined by these towering columns. And it was beautiful until Deathwing showed up and basically defiled the place with his presence. Um, once again, the game team gave us a lot of help 
in designing the look of this place, um, including, let me get to it because it's really cool.